In this video, we're going to talk about void pointers. So void pointers are a very important topic. We'll use them a lot when we start doing data structures and that type of thing. So in this file right now, so far we have a user defined struct, just a simple two integer structure. And then I've declared three variables, an integer, which I've initialized to 10, a character array, which I've initialized with my string, and one of our structures, which I've initialized with 10 and 42. So let's build this and just make sure that what we have so far works. Okay, so, so far I think all that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and add a space here just to give a little, make the output a little bit nicer. So I'm going to declare a void pointer. Now you've seen void when we write functions. Sometimes if there's no return value, we say it returns a void. So far, our, our C programs, we've had void as the parameter to main, meaning we don't take any parameters. And here we have a void pointer which at first may seem odd to you because why would you have a pointer to something that doesn't exist? But the idea of a void pointer is it's a typeless pointer. It can point to anything and you also can't dereference it because it doesn't know what type it is. Now, why would this be useful? Well, we have three variables in this program and we can Use a void pointer to point to anything. So I could say void pointer is equal to the address of num. And let me see if it'll compile without a, a warning. So I didn't get a warning, so I'm going to leave off the cast there. I like to avoid cast whenever possible. Casting back and forth from a void pointer is typically safe because there's no type there. It's different from if you cast to a, say, for example, from an int to a float pointer and vice versa, because in that case, what those memory locations mean is completely different. But void just means there is no type there. So ca the, having an automatic ca cast there is fine. So now void pointer points to num. So if I say void pointer is equal to 999, and I go over and compile, you'll notice I get an invalid use of a void expression. So I'm dereferencing that. Well, if I dereference a void pointer, when I dereference something, I get an alias to a variable. Well, a void variable is nothing. So what I need to do first is before I dereference it, I need to cast it to an int pointer. And I'm missing a parentheses at the end. So you'll notice I'm first casting to an integer pointer, and then I'm dereferencing it. Once I've done that cast, it's an integer pointer now. So when I dereference it, I get an alias to an integer. So let's print everything at the end. And we're going to go through and change actually each of these things using that pointer. So I'll go ahead and put the output there. So as we change these, you'll see num has changed from 10 to 99. And of course, the others haven't changed at all because we haven't done that yet. OK, so let's change our string using void pointer. Now, remember, I can use either the address of index 0 or a specific index in the array, or I can use the array name as a pointer. So when I set a pointer equal to an array name, that will work. That array name is going to be equivalent to the address of the array. So let's do a string copy. And 
and that's seven characters that we want to copy there. And let's compile that and see. And now notice the string has changed from my string to hello. And finally, let's set void pointer equal to our structure. Now this gets a little crazy. So here we're going to cast the void pointer to a my struct t pointer. And now I can actually just use the arrow notation to get a. We'll set that equal to negative one. And we'll set b equal to negative 99. And you'll notice I copied and pasted there because I certainly didn't want to type all of this out. But this, this syntax looks perhaps really scary. I wrote it. It looks scary to me. But pay attention to what it's doing. This parentheses is giving a type. It's a struct my struct t pointer. So then putting that in parentheses, meaning I'm casting whatever's next to this type. So I'm casting the void pointer to a struct my struct t pointer. So then all of that's in parentheses, meaning once I've done that cast, this, this expression in the parentheses evaluates to a pointer, a pointer variable, actually, because remember when we, or I'm sorry, no, it, 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 it now becomes a pointer to a my struct t type. So then I can use the arrow to access each of the individual fields. So let's print this. And you'll see that those values have changed. So where we use void pointers in the real world would be any time where we're writing a function that needs a pointer, but doesn't really care what that pointer is. And we'll see some examples later in the semester with pointers to functions and also with data structures. So one of the nice things about a data uh, about void pointers is it allows us to do something similar to what generic types do in Java, where we'll have a node structure for a linked list, let's say, and that node structure will have pointers to the next node. And it'll also have a pointer to some data. Well, we don't want to have integer data and then an, an, a string linked list and a structured linked list. We're just going to make a void pointer so that that can point to whatever type of data we want.